Welcome back to Let's Play No One Lives Forever, Burning Dog fans. We now pick up right where we left off. Miss Haig, sir. Splendid! Show her in. I'll leave you to your interview, Dog. I'll be shopping for the rest of the afternoon. Yes, yes. Have a marvelous time, Chipmunk. Don't call me that. As you wish, my love. Pip, pip. He's rather larger than I expected. Ah, yes. He's a big bundle of charisma and intelligence. If you're lucky, perhaps he'll regale you with his rousing safari adventures. Good day, Baron de Maur. Goodness, had I known you would be so sumptuous, I might have preened. Care for a drink? No, thank you. It's a little early for me. Well, I'll indulge for us both in that case. I hope you'll pardon me for saying so, but you're a ravishing girl. Simply ravishing. That's very kind of you. I'm sure your wife feels absolutely spoiled by your abundant charm. Oh, she's a lucky old crow, I'll grant you that. Now then, Giles tells me you want to profile me for this magazine of yours. Yeah, Men of Influence, was it? Yes. Each issue we cover a different person in our Perfect Live series. Someone whose lifestyle and achievements serve as inspiration for our readers. Jolly good. You've come to the right place. That will be all, Giles. Actually, sir, I thought it might be worthwhile for me to stay. In case the young lady should desire... Uh, anything at all. Splendid idea. Pip, pip. Yes, sir. I'll be right over here if you require anything, Miss Haig. Thank you. Baron de Maul, do you mind if I record our interview? I'd rather devote my attention to you than to my notepad. And who could blame you? Record away, my dear. Uh, so then, where shall we begin? Hmm. And there goes the timer. Pardon me a moment. Okay, I'll just have to do some tricky editing there, never mind. Uh, what's it like being such a prestigious big game hunter? Or to kill you takes a savvy, intelligent individual to succeed in business the way you have? What's your secret? Obviously be flattered to the part that he gives a shit about. What's it like being such a prestigious big game hunter? Well, it's difficult to explain to someone who's never experienced the thrill of the hunt, you see. When it's you and your trusty blunderbuss all alone against a ferocious beast, you discover exactly what sort of stuff you're made of. Sounds ghastly. Oh, it takes a special breed of male, I'll grant you that. The merest hesitation could cost you a leg. Question two. Many men with such immense wealth succumb to slaughter in, uh, in moderation. How do you keep yourself productive and effectual in the face of such constant temptation? What's the most heroic thing you ever did on Safari? She's not very good at, uh... fake charm. You know, where you say exactly what the other person wants to hear because you're a spy and you're not actually trying to make friends with them. What's the most heroic thing you ever did on safari? Ah, yeah, splendid question. Well, I once wrestled a lion to the ground and strangled it to death with my bare hands. Yes, I remember now. My porter had injured his leg and was about to be mauled. Dear Lord! Dear Lord, how courageous! Yes, indeed. Oh, one doesn't really stop to think about things. One merely acts. It's amazing you didn't come to harm. Yes, well, the Duma lineage is renowned for resourcefulness and fortitude. I may have just pointed at the screen in the nice line kind of way. I'm sure a man of your education is as broadly read as he is charming. What sort of works of literature have you found most influential? Sure, our loyal readers would love to know what hunting rifle such a magnificent sportsman favors on safari. I'm sure our loyal readers would love to know what hunting rifle such a magnificent sportsman favors on safari. Ah, yes, indeed. 
Well, it depends to some degree on the beast I'm tracking. For a tiger, I tend to favor the legendary Matterhorn Model 4 Special Issue. Isn't that a 22 caliber target rifle? Uh... Seems a bit feeble for a tiger. Yes, but I savor a challenge. How intrepid. You must be quite a marksman to take down a tiger with a single round from a 22. Well, sometimes it takes a few more than that. Still, even three rounds is impressive. It's usually more like 17 or 18. Really? You might find a larger caliber to be more humane. Yes, but then you have to deal with all that nasty recoil. I see. I mean, these are really easy. I mean, I'm, what am I supposed to do? Just keep asking the questions that he likes, or what? What's the most dangerous animal you ever faced? I once squared off against a silverback gorilla. A silverback gorilla? Yes, a huge, ferocious, man-eating beast. Man-eating? Quite so. But I was under the impression that gorillas were herbivores and very gentle and less threatened. Well, that's true of some gorillas, but this was you know, one of the dreaded man-eating gorillas of Pakistan. I wasn't aware there were gorillas in Pakistan. God damn it, Kate, here. That's because few live to tell of them, you see. Well, it's fortunate that you did. Agreed. She just can't so turn off the fast. The most dangerous animals to hunt. I was under the impression that that distinction went to Cape Buffalo. But why? Nonsense. Cape Buffalo are just glorified cows. Hmm. Uh... Is there anything that can strike fear into the heart of such a stalwart hunter as yourself? Frankly, no. Really? Nothing at all? Not that I can think of. Not even centipedes? Oh, dreadful things. Uh, yes, I suppose, perhaps centipedes. Personally, I'm terrified of rats. Oh, God, yes. Those beady, evil little eyes and sharp little vermin teeth. Horrible animals, especially in a mob. And spiders. Oh, don't even mention them. How did you become so courageous? Oh, just something one's born with, I suppose. I understand that yours is a steadfastly episcopal lineage. How does your unswerving faith influence your day-to-day -day life? I, hmm. I imagine you've traveled to many exotic cows across the globe in your many daring adventures. Is there any place you favor above all others for hunting? Ah, most certainly. Let me guess. Kenya. Oh, goodness, no. I don't speak a word of Chinese. But Kenya's in Africa. Oh, I thought you were referring to the one in China. All right, then. How about Bengal? Cold weather doesn't agree with me. Rhodesia? Heavens. Madagascar? Not on your life. Where, then? Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm quite fond of Bristol. Partridge? A pandas. Giant pandas. Bristol, England? Yes, indeed. I wasn't aware of any giant pandas in Bristol. Well, they're important. I see. Was that a gazelle trophy in the foyer? Ah, yes. Beautiful creature, isn't it? I'm sure it was lovely when it was alive. Aren't they quite fast? Indeed. You must be quite a marksman. True, although I was rather close in this particular instance. How close? Five yards, I should think. I'm impressed. Stalking a gazelle within five yards? I didn't really stalk it, per se. How did you get that close? Well, it was in a pen, you see. Pardon. 
Some years ago, it occurred to me that all that trancing about in the wilderness is a dreadful waste of time. I concluded that since what I really want is a handsome trophy to hang on my wall, why not simply put the beast in a pen out of the yard and shoot it there? Save myself the bother of tracking it all over creation. Why not just buy trophies, then? Some men might be satisfied with that sort of compromise, but I only display animals I've collected myself. There's no honor in buying a trophy now, is there? How efficient. Is there a message you'd like to share with your many admirers? Good hunting, my humble devotees. Well, that's all the questions I prepared. I must confess, I'm positive this will be our most popular Perfect Lives installment yet. Oh, you think so? Absolutely. Rarely does nature combine so many excellent qualities in one man. Our readers will be fascinated and maybe even a bit envious. One can hardly blame them. See, that's better. What I don't understand is where such a busy man finds the time to be a successful business tycoon, loving husband, daring hunter, astute philosopher, cultivated humorist, etc. Aren't you overwhelmed? Well, one learns to delegate. For example, although you wouldn't guess it, I'm only peripherally involved with Dumas Enterprises these days. Strictly in an advisory capacity, you see, to keep the company on track. How ingenious. Oh, well, I have my moments. But isn't it an awful risk to hand over operations to someone less accomplished in the subtleties of enterprise than yourself? Actually, it's safer that way. Really? Yes, you see, in my experience, the less one knows about running a business, the less he can screw up. I make all the important decisions. The rest is just, you know, paperwork. Still, you wouldn't want your competitors getting their hands on that paperwork. Oh, quite true. But we have a very large safe in which to store it. Safes can be cracked. No, not this one. Even if someone could get inside, he'd still have to get past the security system. Sounds daunting. Oh, it is. Oh, there are invisible beams. Infrared? Exactly! If you touch one of them, the doors lock and poison gas is released into the safe. Not bad. How terrible. Oh, I'd like to meet the burglar who could get in there. It would take a lunatic even to attempt it. Or a fool. Thank you for your time, Baron de Maul. It's been an eye-opening experience. I'm happy to oblige. Uh, never turn your back on a worthy cause, I always say. A worthy meal is more like it. Okay, let's see. Interrogate the Baron without arousing suspicion. Photograph three ledgers. I did not turn the alarm system back on. I did not avoid detection somehow. I guess that was including the, uh, the factory. But I did leave everything as I found it. Spy. I'll accept that. That mission sucked. F minus, do not recommend. Reputation bonus. Awards earned. Operational safety medal issued by Unity Field Agent Insurance Division. Thanks for not getting hurt award issued by Mr. Jones, Chief of Unity. Okay. Well done, Agent Archer. You may redeem yourself yet. In the meantime, don't get cocky. There's still work to be done. Command will fill you in on the details. Report there immediately. Before we go to that other conversation, uh, shout out to Venser's Prodigy, who reminded me that the... Well, he said that the, uh, the, 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 the trope, for lack of a better word, uh, for a, uh, a Chekhov's gun that doesn't go off is a red herring. It's not exactly what I was getting at. I, th I was thinking of TV tropes, that they have a million funny names for different variations on things. I thought it would be something like a Chekhov's gun misfiring, but I couldn't find anything like that when I did a quick search last night. Um...
No, a red herring is uh, foreshadowing that is specifically set up to lead the viewer or the reader or whatever to the wrong conclusion. You know, to throw them on the wrong trail. Uh, and also, shout out to Yornik, who informed me that, uh, you know, to correct something I said earlier, turns out underwater machine guns and pistols are real. In fact, when I started looking into it, I stumbled across some pictures that were surprisingly familiar, and I realized that uh, some, at least, of the specific weapons that show up in that depth game I mentioned are actually real. So, uh, apologies to the makers of those weapons, I guess. And apologies to the uh, developers of Depth for doubting their product. Is it possible he was putting on an act? I don't think so, sir. I'm fairly confident the man is an imbecile. I heard the tape and I gotta agree. Still it's clear that Dumas Industrial Enterprises is somehow linked to harm. Well, didn't the Baron say that he wasn't really running the show anyway? Who's the vice president of the company? According to our research, his name is Damascus Valentine. Well, that's a villain name. D.V. What? His initials, Damascus Valentine, Dmitry Volkov. Coincidence? Seems rather tenuous. I actually agree but with him for once. But intriguing. In any case, we need to know what's in the safe the Baron mentioned to you. It won't be easy, naturally, but it could be the key to this investigation. I'm looking forward to the challenge, sir. That's the spirit. Mr. Smith, what did Intelligence find out about the building? It's a veritable fortress. Not only is there a suspiciously large and well-trained security staff, but they've also invested heavily in high-tech surveillance equipment. Cameras, infrared alarm systems, the works. Fuck. They must really have something to hide. Our thoughts exactly. So what's the plan? Who is going inside? You are. What? Why her? It's way too dangerous for a woman. Oh, don't start with that again. Before joining Unity, Agent Archer was something of an expert in, um, covert infiltration, one might say. Breaking and entering, others might say. Whatever the case, this assignment calls for stealth and subtlety. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, I know. Subtlety isn't my specialty. I still think it's too dangerous for her to go in alone. Which is why you'll be providing a distraction for her downstairs. I like the sound of that. How do I get inside? Attempting entry on the ground floor would be suicide even for an expert like Ms. Archer. The only way in is through the roof access. What did you have in mind? Am I going to have to parachute in? Too imprecise. Fortunately, there's an alternative. Dumas Enterprises is erecting a second skyscraper right next to its corporate headquarters. Our surveillance photos suggest that if you can get to the top of the new building, you can use a crane to cross over to the roof of the old one. The surveillance photos suggest that this is possible? It will be close. You'll have a zip cord to cut the difference. I see. Once you're inside the building, you'll need to locate the president's office and find the safe. Photograph anything remotely suspicious. We don't want to tip our hand, so leave everything as you found it. The less they know about our mission, the better. Now then, time is of the essence. I hate you so much, yes, it's sir. unreal. Why would you send me on this mission? Uh. Welcome to Advanced Field Tactics. Strangest sense of deja vu. Yep, that completes it. <laughs> We have the Sphinx Series M code breaker. Simply attach it to a standard 10 key security pad and it will run through a series of combinations until it breaks the code. Cool. The duration of this process is determined by the complexity of the code, so it may be advisable to hide until the procedure is complete. Try out your code breaker on this keypad. No. Oh, all right. But next time, say please. We've added 
added an infrared scanner to your sunglasses to help you circumvent the security systems you're likely to encounter. Cool. If you see suspicious looking fixtures like these mounted on a wall, be sure to switch on your scanner lest you announce your presence unintentionally. Oh, I hate this. How's it going, Leon? Creepy. I had wondered why they were red. Excellent. Accurate. Rude, but accurate. I'm bored. I never have any fun. Neither do I. I think that is the same cutscene that played earlier, except that the graffiti on the poster. Sorry, my air conditioning was on too high. It was freezing in here. Embarrassing. While it's clear that Dumas Industrial Enterprises is somehow involved with harm, it's not entirely certain who the mastermind is. You must infiltrate the company's corporate headquarters building, locate the safe in the president's office, and photograph any relevant documents you find. Agent Goodman will provide a distraction that should draw attention away from you, but you should still expect resistance. Okay, so last time the robot dog came in handy, not at all. I don't know. Um, infiltrate the Baron's corporate headquarters building. Locate the Baron's office. Locate the Baron's hidden safe. Search for information on Dr. Schenker's whereabouts, and look for information on harm. Crossbow. Quiet and deadly. Alright. Quiet, you. Why are there two of them? MPL, 9mm, SMG. It's not like one of them is silenced and one of them isn't. I don't know. Is this going to be like a, a long-range thing? You know, like the sniper rifle? Can I put a scope on that? I really don't know how useful this is going to be in this level. Wait. Doesn't say anything about not being detected. Maybe I will go with these. Sunglasses, belt buckle, code breaker. And Barrett. I'm going to take that. I encounter a surprisingly large amount of steam. But you know what? Maybe I... Hmm. Fire extinguisher or bandages? What do you guys think? Hunch, I'm gonna go with the bandages. But uh, there goes the timer, so we're actually going to start the mission in the next episode of Let's Play No One Lives Forever. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you then. Later!